In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at uh, permutations involving all different objects. And on the first uh, page here, we're going to take a look at a little example. It says, list all the ways the letters A, B, and C can be arranged. So A, B, and C are three different objects here. Now, these are all the ways we could write an A and a B and a C in different orders. So we could go A, B, C, for example. So we're starting with A. I could start with A, but instead of doing B, C, I could go C, B. If I did the B first, I could have A and then C, or C and then A. I'm doing this in an order so I don't miss anything. And so if I did the C first, I could go B and then A or A and then B. And so that's all the different orders that you could uh, write down the letters A, B, and C in, in different orders. And so notice that there are six ways to do that. Now, take note, uh, NB is Latin for note obedient or take note, that we could instead, this is a different way to get the six, think of this, okay, we're arranging three things, so there's those three boxes, or we're going to put letters in those, and the first one that we choose, let's say we choose the one on the far left, there are three ways to select a letter, there's A or B or C. Now once you put a letter here, and we're saying there's no repetition, so we can only use A once, B once, and then C once. So once you've picked a letter for there, there's two ways to do this. So for every three ways to do this one, there's two letters left to put in the second spot, and once you put a letter here and a letter here, then there's only one way to fill the last one. And uh, I'm trying to use a terminology that makes you think of multiplication here. For every three ways to do this, there are two ways to do this, and then there's for each of those, there's one way to fill the last spot. So that's why we would multiply those together, and 3 times 2 times 1 equals 6. So that's another way to get the 6 here, rather than just listing them all. Now, these six arrangements are called all the permutations of the letters A, B, and C. Now, when it says taken three at a time, that just means we're using all three of them. If it said taken two at a time, then we would do just two letters. For example, A, B, or A, C, or B, C. Those are examples of permutations where we're only using two at a time because it's just two letters. So permutations means arrangements where changing the order makes a different arrangement. So they're all the same letters, but different orders makes different permutations. Now, if we have n objects, n different objects, and we're selecting all of them, okay, so not a subset, not a smaller group, the permutations of n different objects selected all together at the same time, the number of permutations of n different objects is an arrangement of all the objects in a definite order. The order, if you change the order, it makes a different permutation. And a, one way to figure out how many different arrangements there are, uh, the capital P stands for the word permutation. A permutation of n objects taken n at a time is, and remember the last page, I'll go back here for a second, there were three objects. So there's three ways to select the first one, and once you've already used one, there's one less way to select the next one, and then one less way to select the next one. Well, if there's n objects, there's n ways to select the first one, and if we've used one of them up, then there's going to be n minus one ways to select the next one, the second one. And once we've used two of them up, there's n minus two ways to select the next one, and then it would be times n minus three, etc. Down to, and the very last way, once you've used up all the objects except the last one, for example, then there's only one way to pick the last one, like there was a one on the end of the, on the last page. Now, if you take the product of all the numbers 1 up to n, that's called n factorial. Some people use the word prime, okay, n prime, if you hear somebody say that, it means the same thing, uh, where of course n is a natural number. You can't, for example, take uh, the factorial of a decimal number, like there's no 5.6 factorial, it's not defined. From the example on the uh, first page here, uh, we're actually we were taking the permutation of three letters taken three at a time, and that equals three factorial, which is three times two times one, which is that six from the previous page. So there's the three times two times one, which of course gives you that six. In the example on the uh, next page, you're asked how many four-letter permutations of the letters in the word ignace can be formed. So notice that the word ignace has six letters, and they're all different. There's no repetition of letters at all. So there's six letters. So let's say we start in the left. It really doesn't matter where you start. You could start, you could fill this, and then this, and then this, and then this if you wanted to. But it's just it's more organized if you do it this way. So there's there's six ways to select this uh, letter here. There's I can put an I, G, N, A, C, or E there. And once I've used one of those letters up, then there's only five ways to select the next one. 
Now if I've selected two letters already, there's going to be two of the six are used, so there's four ways to select the next one, and then of course there's only three letters left to put in the fourth spot. And so if you think of this, there's six ways to do this, and for each of those there's five ways to select this, and for each of those there's four ways to select this, etc. So that's why we would multiply those all together to give us 360 ways you can arrange the letters in the word Ignace uh, in groups of four. We're only selecting four here. So there's 360 ways to do that. Now, so this is actually a permutation of six different objects, six different letters here, taken four at a time, because we're taking a group, we're making a group of four. So notice that six permute four is six times five times four times three. So it starts with the uh, the first number, and then times one less than that, times one less than that, times one less than that. Now I'm going to show a different way to evaluate this, especially if you get this to be a, a, a very big with large numbers. There is a different way to calculate this rather than just six times five times four, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by two times one, and the reason two, because two is the next number below three, so I'm really multiplying it by two on top and two in the bottom in the denominator, and so I'm really multiplying this by one. I just want to show a different formula here, so that's why I'm not changing it all, because I'm really multiplying it by one. Well, what's on the product on the top here is the product of all the numbers from one to six, so that whole product is actually six factorial. In the denominator here, 2 times 1 is 2 factorial. So this is actually equal to 6 factorial over 2 factorial. Well, it's pretty easy to see where the 6 factorial comes from. That's the first number. But where does the 2 factorial come from? Notice that 2 is the difference between 6 and 4. And so we could write this as 6 factorial over 6 minus 4 factorial. That's where the 2 factorial in the denominator comes from. So this is actually going to give us a formula for this. It's this factorial on top, and then the difference between these factorial in the denominator. For example, let's say we had another one. Let's say you had 20, time, 20 permute 5. So it would be 20 times 19 times 18, 17, and down to 16. So that's five numbers. Now, the last number... Uh, like if you want to write this as a long product, if you're if the, you're permuting, permuting a lot of things, to know how far to go, like if there's a lot of numbers, the last number is the 20 minus the 5 plus 1. You have to do the plus 1 because if you do 20 minus 5, that's actually 15. You'd actually have gone one number too many, because if think of you, this is supposed to be five numbers. Okay, so if you this is the first, that's the second, 18 is the third, okay, 17 is the fourth, 16 would be the fifth number. So you can't just go 20 minus 5 because you're actually you're you're actually going to go down like as 20 minus 5 is 15. You're actually going to go down one number too many. So that's why in the formula you have to add one on the end. Okay, so there's only supposed to be five numbers here of permuted five. Like there were four numbers here when we permuted six permuted four. So that's the product of the numbers we'd be looking at. <clears throat> so if I were to do this using this formula here, uh, it would be 20 factorial over, uh, and 20 minus 5 is 15 in the denominator, 15 factorial in the, in the denominator. And that would give the same amount as this product. So in general, if you're permuting n objects taken r at a time, it's n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, etc., all the way down to, and the last object is the difference of n and r, so n minus r plus 1. Remember, you have to do the plus 1 or you actually will go to the one number too many. So a permutation of n objects taken r at a time is the number of arrangements of r, so r is the size of the group of the objects in a definite order. And this permuted, uh, this is denoted n permute r, where uh, n permute r is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 down to n minus r plus 1. So that's equal to, uh, and that's equal to n factorial over n minus r factorial. Notice what's in the denominator is the difference between the n and the r factorial. Now we have to, we make a definition, uh, I'm going to prove that this is true, that 0 factorial equals 1. And <coughs> so uh, this is actually a proof that n permute n is always equal to n factorial. Using this formula, we would have n factorial in numerator and n minus n in factorial in the denominator. Well, n minus n is zero, and the only way this is equal to n factorial is if, uh, if and only if we define zero factorial equal one. 
So that's a definition that's made. And in that way, then n permute is n permute n is always equal to n factorial. And that's the end of the tutorial.